Greetings subscribers and other curious persons and welcome to another vlog inspired by the Goodreads Tuesday Talks group. This week's topic is favourite quotes from books. Well, I had great difficulty with this topic because, as some of you may already know, I'm a great believer in nuance and context. So quotes while I might enjoy a phrase while I'm reading a book, often, in my opinion, suffer from not having the context in them. Which sometimes makes of them something less exciting in the way that a piece from a jigsaw puzzle isn't exciting when you remove it from the book and sometimes actually change the meaning. Take, for instance, Robert Frost's Good Fences Make Good Neighbours. It's often taken as being something in favour of maintaining order in a community to get on with each other. But Within the context of the poem it's taken from, it's actually an ironic lampoon of the idea that dividing yourself from other people is a good idea. So it's actually about breaking down the barriers between people rather than there being a value in erecting fences between people. And Secondly, and potentially more egregiously, an eye for an eye from the Bible, which people point at and say is a barbaric practice. But read within the context of the text and the community to which it was delivered, it's actually suggesting proportionality and restraint rather than violent retribution. In the context of a society where you would kill someone for their crimes against you, it's saying if someone does something to you, only do that to them back. If they take your eye, take an eye rather than killing them. So it's, in context, saying something different. <clears throat> Which is why I have difficulty with quotes, that they can feel nice in the mouth. They can sound nice. They can seem to support a point. But there's always a bit in the back of my mind that's wondering if they've been intentionally or not chopped out of the framework that gives them meaning. But there are also a few quotes that potentially demonstrate an approach to life where the meaning they have to me shows something to me, even if that is not the meaning that the author intended. So I thought I'd try and give three quotes that do mean something to me. And so I should start with a quote about starting. In the beginning was the word. Now, to me, that says to me that reality is about the labelling. There isn't, in any meaningful sense, a here is reality, we perceive reality, and then we put labels on it. The human experience is that the label happens at the moment of perception. So... 
by the time we realize something is there, we've already labeled it. That to human beings, a communicable concept occurs at the moment we experience reality, so it's indivisible from it. And potentially, our reality is more about the concept set that we have than actually what is objectively there. My second meaningful quote is from Paradise Lost, that it's better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. Which for me demonstrates that there are two broad types of people. Those who want to be in charge and those who want to achieve something. And most of us are somewhere on that scale. But fundamentally, there are people who, given a choice between being recognised and doing something very impressive, but in secret, will take being recognised for something less impressive because they want to be recognised. And other people who will forgo the trappings of power to achieve a goal, even if no one knows it's them. My third quote to deviate from biblical sources is from Grant Morrison's The Invisibles. Uh, King Mob is standing on the San Francisco Bridge and he says that he wants to build a better world even for our enemies. And that smacked me in the face the first time I saw it because it rejects the concept of binaries. It rejects that things are zero sum, that if, two, if I disagree with someone about something, the standard dynamic since prehistory has been a tribalist, my tribe versus yours, my family versus yours, me versus you, us versus other. But building a better world, even for our enemies, smacks that out the water, says, well, winning isn't a zero sum game. For me to have the ideal world doesn't have to mean other people have to suffer. For me to achieve something doesn't mean someone else has to lose. The perceptual framework of human reality is such that we can have two people with conflicting goals both being happy because instead of there being an objective binary overlap that overlap potentially can be perceived differently by different people so the contextual framework that I mentioned earlier in this video where the quote changes meaning because it's taken out of context or because it's glossed by someone in a particular way as I've glossed these three quotes means that what I experience when I read those quotes can be different enough from what you experience when you read them that we can draw an equal but different amount of happiness from it. We can use them to drive us to an equal but different goal. That the text isn't immutable. <clears throat> Our lives aren't immutable. The reality we're working with isn't 
fixed to the extent that something necessarily has to mean if I win, you lose. If I advance, you go back. And that for me is very inspiring and also potentially reveals what the joy of reading is, that when you are reading, you're taking words and you're turning them into a perceived world. They're not, there isn't actually physically when you pick up the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and start reading a Narnia created. But for all intents and purposes, there is no difference at that moment between that book being entirely fictional and you watching events that are happening in a real Narnia. So quotes are like news reports, really. They're showing a little bit of the world. And from that, we build a ginormous framework. So my favorite quotes are probably the one I am reading at the moment in the instant that I am reading it, because that is the moment where my entire existence is that moment that world that I'm interfacing with. And that quote is giving me an entire other universe. But at the moment that I stop reading that quote and move on to the next sentence, the new sentence is providing a slightly different universe. And the previous sentence has stopped. So I'm not certain if I could pick more quotes or even if the quotes that I like will remain the same. But, uh, I think I'd better stop there before I uh, dissolve the fabric of communication itself. Doodle-loop!